In October of 2015, a mother and daughter who had lost their minds on the Brooklyn, New York police arresting the daughter's boyfriend two years earlier sued the city over the way police treated them during their outburst and won. The chaotic scene at the center of the suit unfolded in 2013 when officers apprehended Sonny Sotil's boyfriend, Nicholas Giampaolo, at Russo and Sotil's Mill Basin residence. The arrest was in connection with an alleged ATM break-in in Gravesend. As the handcuffed Giampaolo was being escorted out of the house, Russo and Sotil became unhinged, screaming their objections and fighting with the police officers on the scene in their desperate attempts to rescue Giampaolo. The situation quickly escalated, resulted in both women being forcefully taken to the ground, handcuffed and subsequently charged with disorderly conduct. The officers maintained that Russo and Sotil had interfered with the arrest and had even accused Sotil of assaulting them after Giampaolo was restrained. Just a few months later, the two cases regarding the women were adjourned, with talk of possibly dismissing them entirely. Russo and Sotil seized the opportunity to file a lawsuit against the city and the officers involved, claiming that excessive force had been used against them without just cause. While their attorney remained silent on the matter, the city decided to settle the case, forking over $25,000 to bring the legal battle to an end. Number 8. Walmart In an incident captured on video and shared in October of 2023, an unknown woman riding a motorized scooter in a Walmart store was seen physically assaulting a police officer after being accused of theft. The footage, which surfaced on Reddit, shows the suspect engaged in a heated confrontation with the officer near the checkouts before the situation escalated into violence. The suspect, described as a plus-sized black woman wearing a grey t-shirt and bright purple leggings, engaged in a tumultuous exchange with the officer. Amid the chaotic scene, the woman is heard repeatedly shouting, Yes, I did! in response to undisclosed accusations made by the officer. As tensions escalate, the woman proceeds to hurl items at both the officer and a nearby cashier, creating a disruptive and volatile environment within the store. The officer attempts to restrain the suspect, leading to a physical altercation that culminates in the woman aggressively resisting the officer's attempts to control the situation. Despite the efforts of the officer to subdue the woman and place her under arrest, the suspect continues to express her grievances including allegations of racism directed towards the store. At this point, a crowd of onlookers has gathered and Walmart employees are working frantically to contain the situation. Following the altercation, the situation remains unresolved, with the specific details of the alleged theft and subsequent events unclear. Walmart has yet to respond to inquiries regarding the incident. Number 7 airline. In an incident that unfolded on board Frontier Airlines Flight 1161 on November 16, a passenger was filmed having a significant meltdown, prompting a preacher nearby to implore others to pray before breaking into song. The chaos was captured in a video uploaded to Reddit. The footage reveals drama erupting during the flight with a woman sobbing and swearing at airline employees while being pulled down the aisle. Amid the chaos, the woman adamantly protests, shouting, Stop pulling on my arm! As the situation escalates, a passenger in a grey beanie intervenes, attempting to mediate and speak to the distraught passenger as she is led towards the front of the plane. The video captures other passengers reacting, with some shouting and capturing the scene on their phones. The distressed woman's behavior becomes increasingly erratic, culminating in her climbing over seats as fellow passengers scramble into the aisle to avoid the commotion. Despite efforts by airline employees to subdue the woman, she continues to express panic and resistance, demanding to be released. Eventually, another passenger begins pacing up and down the aisle, suggesting that the woman causing a scene is possessed and calling for a spiritual intervention. 
Despite the efforts of airline staff and fellow passengers to address the situation, the woman's distress persists. Ultimately, the flight, which departed from Houston and was en route to Denver, was diverted to Dallas due to the incident. Number 6. James Kiddy. In 2014, police constable James Kiddy, aged 45 at the time of the incident, faced scrutiny after CCTV footage captured him punching a suspected shoplifter, Sarah Reed, multiple times in the head at Uniqlo in Regent Street, London. In a video of the incident, Kitty forcefully handled Reed, lifting her from a chair and striking her while she attempted to shield herself. Despite being convicted of assault, Kitty received only a 12-month community order requiring 150 hours of unpaid work, with the court hearing that he had two previous disciplinary findings for incivility on his record. Following a three-day trial, Kitty was found guilty of common assault for his actions towards Reed during the incident at the Uniqlo store. The CCTV footage displayed Kitty's forceful behavior, including grabbing Reed's hair, hitting her head, and leaning on her neck until backup arrived. The court noted that while Kiddy claimed his actions were in response to being bitten by Reed, the level of force used was concerning to fellow officers who reported the incident to the Met's Directorate of Professional Standards. Kiddy, attached to Westminster Borough, was informed of his dismissal from the Metropolitan Police due to the court's findings. District Judge Elizabeth Roscoe sentenced Kitty to a 150-hour community order, emphasizing the need for higher standards from a police officer. Acknowledging the incident as a momentary lapse of control, the judge recognized the immediate retaliation in anger displayed by Kitty. Despite the violent nature of the attack, the judge deemed that compensation was not appropriate, ordering Kitty to pay prosecution costs and a victim surcharge. Number 5. McDonald's In February of 2015, a McDonald's employee at a St. Paul branch in Minnesota was filmed having a violent outburst after being fired, causing significant damage to the restaurant. The video captured the ex-employee still in uniform swearing, shouting, and trashing the area behind the counter. Ignoring the shocked customers, he smashed glasses, threw drinks, and damaged appliances while verbally assaulting other employees. The footage titled, McDonald's Employee Gets Fired and Goes Crazy, gained over 32,000 views on YouTube shortly after being uploaded. The enraged ex-employee left a trail of destruction including broken glass, trays, and ketchup as he expressed his anger about being fired and clashed with his boss. Despite being urged to leave by the manager and other customers, the man continued his destructive behavior and confrontations within the restaurant. In the video, the furious ex-employee can be seen rampaging through the kitchen area, continuing his tirade while causing further chaos. He demanded his pay, berated his colleagues, and disregarded requests to leave the premises. The incident concluded with the man putting on his coat, while still engaged in a heated exchange with the manager, showcasing the aftermath of his disruptive actions at the restaurant. The manager who handled the situation was later fired due to upper management disagreeing with how he went about things. The manager in question, identified as Brandon Robertson, claimed that he did all he could given how the scenario played out. The ex-employee that trashed the restaurant was a minor, so Robertson, whose five-year tenure with the franchise ended at that point, refused to physically touch the young man. He did ask for somebody to call 911, but officers arrived after the employee had already left. Robertson, for his part, had tried to back him down verbally but refused to take further measures to get him out of the restaurant and away from customers. Number 4. Service Dog A dispute unfolded at Kathy's Crab House in Delaware when a woman Sierra Miller expressed disdain towards a military veteran's PTSD service dog inside the restaurant 
deeming his presence as nasty. The incident, captured in a viral YouTube video, depicted Miller engaged in a heated argument with the dog's owner and other patrons, asserting her opinion on animals in dining establishments. Despite being informed that the dog belonged to a veteran, Miller stood by her perspective that service animals should be segregated in designated areas within restaurants. The video, viewed over 400,000 times, showcased the confrontation between Miller and retired U.S. Army Master Sergeant Bill Austin, the dog's owner. Conflicting narratives emerged regarding the escalation of the dispute, with Miller claiming discomfort due to the dog's proximity to her table and advocating for separate accommodations for service animals. In contrast, Austin contended that the dog named JP complied with ADA guidelines and remained on the floor, refuting Miller's assertions of intrusion. Following the incident, both Miller and Austin provided differing accounts of the altercation, with Miller highlighting online backlash and concerns for her safety, while Miller alleged verbal attacks and racial slurs during the confrontation. Austin emphasized adherence to ADA regulations and his wife's attempt to clarify guidelines. Number 3. Delta A viral video from 2022, capturing a woman's aggressive outburst on a plane full of passengers, has sparked online attention after being shared on Reddit by a user named Vincent Crows. The footage, lasting two minutes, depicts the brunette woman swearing and shouting at crew members and fellow passengers, reportedly triggered by being instructed to remove her dog from her lap during the flight. The incident, which occurred on a flight from Atlanta to New York on October 12, garnered significant online engagement, amassing over 56,300 views and 6,600 comments. In the video, the irate passenger can be seen hurling expletives at those on board, including crew members, while also throwing a water bottle with force towards a row behind her. Despite demands to cease filming from another passenger, the woman continues her tirade, expressing frustration over delays to her destination due to the dog policy. The situation escalates as a crew member intervenes and urges the woman to disembark, resulting in her removal from the aircraft with the support of fellow passengers, the Atlanta Police Department confirmed the incident, but reported that no arrests were made as the involved parties declined prosecution. The woman's disruptive behavior, including an alleged physical altercation involving a water bottle, led to her ejection from the flight. Delta Airlines, the airline involved in the incident, emphasized a zero-tolerance policy towards such behavior, prioritizing the safety and security of both passengers and crew members in response to the disruptive incident. Today's topic was requested by The Doxy Mama, 4110. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Fort Lauderdale On a Southwest Airlines flight bound for Fort Lauderdale, a disruptive incident unfolded in April of 2023 when a male passenger threw a tantrum in response to a crying baby on board. The man's outburst, captured by fellow passengers, featured him demanding the baby silence and escalating into a prolonged episode of yelling during the flight. Flight attendants attempted to defuse the situation, urging the passenger to calm down as his behavior drew attention and concern from those on board. Amid the chaotic mid-air scene, the disruptive passenger's tirade continued even as the flight landed in Orlando, prompting the offloading of all passengers from the aircraft. The man's aggressive remarks, captured on video, included threats to escalate the situation further by screaming if the baby's crying did not cease. Security personnel met the passenger upon disembarkation with Southwest Airlines commending its crew for their handling of the challenging incident and emphasizing the importance of professionalism in managing such disruptions. In response to the incident, Southwest Airlines issued a statement acknowledging the professionalism of their crew in managing the challenging situation and expressing gratitude to passengers for their patience amid the disruption. Aviation expert John Nance 
highlighted the potential consequences of such behavior, emphasizing the need for compliance with crew instructions to avoid police intervention at the journey's conclusion. The outcome concerning any repercussions faced by the disruptive passenger from law enforcement or the airline remained undisclosed following the incident. We will line up our long compilation about when blowing a fuse goes wrong right after number one. Stay put if you'd like to watch that one as well still. Number one, declined card. In Santa Ana, California, a man's violent outburst at a 7-Eleven convenience store was captured on surveillance video after his credit card was declined during a purchase attempt for a bag of M&Ms. Back in 2017, the incident unfolded when the customer's card was declined, prompting him to lash out in anger by assaulting the store clerk, throwing items, and causing approximately $700 in damage to the registers and printers. Police in Santa Ana released the footage in hopes of identifying the individual involved in the disruptive and destructive episode, emphasizing the severity of the situation sparked by a denied transaction for a simple purchase. The escalating confrontation, triggered by the card denial, escalated into physical violence as the disgruntled customer targeted the clerk and store equipment, resulting in a chaotic scene that left the store staff and property impacted by the unexpected and costly outburst of aggression. It didn't take authorities long to find the culprit. The suspect was eventually found thanks to tips stemming from the release of the surveillance video. Officers arrested 42-year-old Daniel Fine at a nearby sober living home. The man pled guilty to charges including assault and vandalism and was sentenced to 30 days in jail after having already been in custody for about two months. He was also sentenced to three years of informal probation. Number 8. Pearl Ozaria, Chitara Placencia and Tatiana Johnson On July the 4th of 2022, a trio of New York women each in their 20s at the time were arrested after wreaking havoc at a restaurant called Bell Fries. Shortly after placing an order, the three suspects, identified as Pearl Ozaria, Chitara Placencia and Tatiana Johnson, reportedly flew into a rage when they were informed that they'd be charged an extra $1.75 for sauce. The women proceeded to scream at the employees and began throwing stools and glass bottles around the establishment. Two of the women then climbed behind the counter, destroying the plastic barriers that had been set up during the pandemic and emptied several sauce containers. The whole incident was caught on camera and was later uploaded to TikTok, where it immediately went viral. When the police arrived, they found one of the women dancing on the counter while the others continued to destroy computers and even a cash register. Law enforcement tried to apprehend them, to which Ozaria reacted violently, allegedly punching one of the officers in the face. The attack added resisting arrest and obstructing governmental administration to her impending list of criminal charges, while Placencia and Johnson were suspected of criminal possession of a weapon. Two of the employees who'd been attacked suffered from minor injuries while another one was reportedly too traumatized to go back to work in the aftermath. Number 7. Ricky Collin and Amy Hall On November the 3rd of 2021, 34-year-old Ricky Collin and Amy Hall, aged 45, entered Crumb Together, a bakery located in Eugene, Oregon poised to make an emphatic political statement. With COVID prevention measures in full swing, the couple were requested to put on their masks before placing an order. Stunned witnesses recorded the assault that ensued after Colin and Hall refused to either cover their faces or leave the establishment. The bakery's owner grabbed a baseball bat, attempting to scare the unruly customers away. Instead, Colin lunged at the man, forcibly took the bat from him, and proceeded to strike him with it several times. Following the attack, the victim was taken to the hospital but fortunately escaped without any severe injuries. In the altercation's aftermath, the couple were arrested and charged with third-degree assault. The arrest added to Colin's existing criminal record as he'd reportedly faced a misdemeanor charge of trespassing in connection to a similar incident at the Roseburg Public Library earlier in the year. Brian Hinson, 
the assistant superintendent of special education who witnessed the episode at the library, explained that a maskless Colin had entered the public building with the intention of making a commotion. When asked to leave, the man refused, instead using his cell phone to record the library workers and occupants. The police were eventually called to the scene and Colin was escorted out of the building. It subsequently emerged that the couple had been involved with an anti-mask activist group and had uploaded several videos to YouTube in which they vehemently protested against health mandates related to COVID-19. Number 6. Jose Alba New York bodega worker Jose Alba was involved in a violent altercation with a disgruntled customer at his store in Hamilton Heights on July the 1st of 2022. The clerk, reported as having been in his 50s or 60s, refused to allow a woman to give her child some snacks after her credit card was rejected multiple times. The female customer got agitated and allegedly grabbed a knife from her purse, which she then used to slash Alba's arm. Later that night, the woman's boyfriend, 37-year-old Austin Simon, entered the bodega to confront Alba about the previous altercation with his girlfriend. He shoved the worker behind the counter before attempting to carry out a robbery. As was captured by the store's security cameras, Alba defended himself by brandishing a knife and stabbing the assailant several times in the neck and chest. The police eventually arrived at the scene and Simon was rushed to the hospital, where he died later that same night. In the wake of the deadly incident, Alba was arrested and charged with second-degree murder. However, the surveillance footage was subsequently released to the public, causing a massive outcry in the store employee's defense, facing the likelihood of a massive public uproar were they to move forward with Alba's prosecution. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office ultimately dismissed the case. By August of 2022, Alba had reportedly decided to leave the United States to return to the city of Santiago in his native country of the Dominican Republic. His former boss later explained that the man no longer felt safe following his running with Simon and had been experiencing flashbacks caused by the emotional trauma he'd suffered. Number 5. Sharice Helena Cleveland Ohio woman Sharice Helena Cleveland had her request to mix three McDonald's slushy flavors denied on June the 14th of 2021, to which she responded by launching a rageful attack on the store's employees. The 44-year-old reportedly jumped behind the counter and threw food around as she attacked the workers. The wild incident was recorded by another customer, which provided local authorities with sufficient evidence to arrest Cleveland. The video would show the woman berating the employees and daring witnesses to call the police before she eventually struck a manager, went viral after being posted to social media in the aftermath. Cleveland was charged with two counts of misdemeanor assault and was released on a $1,000 bond. The arrest reportedly marked the second occasion in which she'd gotten into trouble with the law. In March of 2015, she'd been sentenced to two years in prison and three years of probation for felonious assault, kidnapping and disrupting public service in connection to an incident the previous year in which she'd attacked her grandmother. In letters written to the judge presiding over her case, Cleveland attempted to justify her actions by stating, mental illness strongly runs in my family. She also insisted that she'd tried to be a good citizen and had maintained the same job for 16 years before her mother's death in 2014. In December of 2021, Cleveland was convicted of assault and consequently prohibited from making any form of contact with any of the employees involved in the slushy-related altercation. Number 4. Candace Musni On January the 12th of 2020, former NASCAR driver Candace Musni became irate at manicurist Tiffany Nguyen for speaking in Vietnamese to a co-worker at a nail salon in Oklahoma City. 43-year-old Musni slapped Nguyen and demanded she use English while in the presence of customers. When a witness tried to call 911, the enraged woman allegedly snapped their phone away before pulling out a pocket knife. 
Nguyen fell to the ground to preserve herself and would later reveal that Muzni tried to put the blade up to her throat several times. Upon the arrival of police, the assailant shifted her aggression towards one of the officers, whom she physically attacked. Muzni was consequently arrested on charges of assault with a dangerous weapon, resisting arrest and interfering with a 911 call. After being released on bail, the woman defended her actions during an interview. She stated that she'd felt her anger was justified because she was paying with American dollars and had asked her three times to stop speaking Vietnamese. On February the 17th, roughly a month after the incident, Muzni was found dead in her Ski Island residence and police subsequently investigated the possibility of foul play. After an autopsy, however, the woman's cause of death was ruled as accidental drowning. Number 3. Kelvis Rodriguez Tormes 22-year-old Desmond Armand Joshua was manning the drive through at a Burger King in Orange County, Florida on August the 1st of 2020 when an armed man entered the parking lot. According to subsequent reports on the matter, the gunman, identified as Kelvis Rodriguez Tormes, aged 37, had returned to the restaurant after his girlfriend, Ashley Mason, had complained about waiting in a long line earlier that day. She'd allegedly threatened to bring her man to handle the situation, a threat which prompted Joshua to refuse her service and refund the money she'd already spent on food. Mason became enraged at the worker and shortly thereafter followed through on her threat to solicit her boyfriend to defend her honor. Upon his arrival at the store, Rodriguez Tormes began screaming at Joshua, demanding he agree to a fistfight before putting him in a headlock. After witnesses managed to separate the two men, Rodriguez Tormes pulled out his gun and shot Joshua at point blank range. The victim was rushed to the hospital where he ultimately succumbed to his injuries later that night. Mason and Rodriguez Tormes fled the scene in the aftermath but were eventually tracked down and taken into custody. The gunman was charged with first-degree murder with a firearm as well as destruction of evidence while his girlfriend was accused of aggravated assault with a firearm. Number 2. Victor Lee Tucker Jr. On June the 14th of 2021, Victor Lee Tucker Jr. opened fire at a Big Bear grocery store in Georgia after getting into an argument with one of the store's workers. The confrontation was reportedly sparked when an employee, identified as 41-year-old Laquita Willis, requested that Tucker pull his face mask over his nose. The latter refused and initially stormed away before returning a few moments later with a firearm in hand. He fired several rounds at Willis, killing her instantly. Shortly thereafter, 54-year-old Danny Jordan, an off-duty reserve sheriff's deputy who also worked security at the store, sprung into action. He shot at 30-year-old Tucker but was subsequently struck twice in the ensuing crossfire. When police arrived at the scene, they found the suspect attempting to crawl out the front door and he was then rushed to the hospital, along with Jordan. Both men reportedly managed to make full recoveries. It later emerged that Tucker had been arrested at least eight other times before the fatal shooting. He was indicted by a grand jury on charges of malice murder, felony murder, aggravated assault against a public safety officer, and possession of a firearm. Number 1. Crystal Whipple Las Vegas salon manager Nui Annie Nyok Nguyen was fatally struck by a car in the parking lot of Crystal Nails and Spa on December the 29th of 2018. It was subsequently reported that 21-year-old Crystal Whipple had attempted to skip out on a $35 manicure bill, claiming that she needed to retrieve the money from her car after her credit card had initially been rejected. After getting in her vehicle, however, the young woman started to drive away, at which point she was pursued by 51-year-old Nguyen. According to eyewitnesses, the suspect neglected to stop when Nguyen tried to get in front of the moving car. She instead accelerated, dragging the manager's body through the parking lot. 
The victim reportedly passed away as a result of the critical injuries she'd sustained in the violent collision. Whipple then abandoned the vehicle, a Chevy Camaro, she'd rented before fleeing from justice. A warrant was issued for her arrest and she was ultimately captured two weeks later by the FBI in Phoenix, Arizona. Whipple had allegedly been attempting to get to North Carolina at the time of her arrest. She later pleaded guilty to second-degree murder as part of a deal, allowing her to avoid facing the potential consequences associated with her original charges of felony murder, burglary and robbery. On February 5, 2021, the case's presiding judge, Tierra Jones, sentenced Whipple to 10 to 25 years behind bars. Number 9. Curtis Maurice Clayton On October the 29th of 2021, a Delta Airlines flight from Atlanta to Los Angeles was delayed by 30 minutes from its scheduled departure time after a brawl erupted right before takeoff. 30-year-old Curtis Maurice Clayton had seen the passenger seated behind him identified as German Montez, aged 43, placing something in the pocket of his seat back. Clayton protested, but when his fellow passenger refused to comply, he punched him in the face, escalating the conflict. Montez retaliated and the two began fighting each other in the aisle, with the altercation captured on cell phone video. In the footage, one frustrated passenger was heard remarking, It's literally 6 a.m. Who's fighting at 6 a.m.? The row persisted until another passenger managed to separate the men, restraining Clayton. He was left with a bloody die and was immobilized until officers arrived at the scene and escorted him out of the aircraft. During his arrest, Clayton was reportedly uncooperative and caused damage to a police car. He was taken into custody and charged with battery and interference with government property. Number 8. Chianti Washington on June the 25th of 2018, the pilot of a Spirit Airlines flight from Houston to Minneapolis had to perform an emergency landing in Rochester, Minnesota for a passenger who required medical attention. As the other passengers were waiting for the situation to be resolved, a woman sat up from her seat and started walking around the plane, demanding to get off and yelling threats involving her marine brothers. Two male passengers then attempted to block the woman, identified as 38-year-old Chianti Washington, from erratically running down the aisle. Police were called for assistance and at some point the woman broke down in tears as a male passenger tried to console and calm her down. She was escorted off the airplane by officers who later learned the woman was a veteran and suffered from PTSD. Washington told them she hadn't flown in a long time and after being removed from the plane, she was allowed to go free. Passengers were left visibly shaken by the incident with flight attendants handing tissues to a number of people in the aftermath. The plane took off roughly an hour following Washington's breakdown. Number 7. Brian Hsu 20-year-old Brian Hsu was traveling from New York to Santa Ana, California on October the 27th of 2021 in first class on an American Airlines flight. At some point during the journey, Hsu sat up to go to the bathroom. When he reached the galley, a cabin crew member informed him the seatbelt light was on and that he would have to return to his seat and wait. Hsu reportedly brought his elbow down on the woman's head and repeatedly struck her in the face. To deal with the violent passenger, the pilots were forced to divert the flight to Denver, Colorado. A drink cart was placed in the aisle to barricade him and other passengers taped into a seat to immobilize him. Hsu was arrested upon landing and charged with assault within the special aircraft jurisdiction of the United States and interference with a flight crew facing up to 20 years of imprisonment. During his ensuing police interviews, Hsu claimed the flight attendant had charged at him and that he was scared about a potential impact to his head as he'd had brain surgery a month prior. The flight attendant suffered a concussion in the incident. According to updates on the matter, a verdict had yet to have been announced but Brian Hsu was banned from flying with American Airlines again. Number 6. Alejandro Carlson On December the 12th, of 2020, an Alaska Airlines Boeing 737 airplane was set to depart from Las Vegas's McCarran International Airport to Portland, Oregon. The pilot was preparing for takeoff when he noticed a man approaching the aircraft and notified the tower. Law enforcement was dispatched as the individual had managed to climb onto one of the wings and walk around on it before he sat down and appeared to be talking to himself. As soon as police officers approached the area, the man walked to the vertical winglet of the plane and tried to climb it but lost his grip and fell on the tarmac. 
Law enforcement retrieved and arrested the man who was taken to a medical facility for evaluation. He was identified as 41-year-old Alejandro Carlson and charged with trespassing and disregard for public safety. Subsequent reports suggested there was a possibility of him suffering from mental illness or being impaired. The flight takeoff was delayed by 4 hours and 18 minutes as the aircraft was sent back to its gate for a full inspection and, with Carlson's interruption alone having lasted for approximately 45 minutes. Number 5. Palesh Ahmed, alias Mahali On February the 24th of 2019, the pilots of a Biman Bangladesh Airlines airplane going from Dhaka, Bangladesh, to Dubai, United Arab Emirates, were forced to make an emergency landing at Chattagram Shah Amanat International Airport. Bangladeshi Special Forces commandos stormed the aircraft upon landing and fatally shot a 25-year-old man identified as Palash Ahmed, also known as Mahadi. While his motives remained undetermined, he had attempted to hijack the flight. Shortly after takeoff, as the airplane was flying at an altitude of 15,000 feet, he claimed to have a bomb strapped to his chest and used a toy gun to threaten passengers and cabin crew, demanding for the cockpit to be opened. He then took a crew member hostage and asked to speak with the Prime Minister of Bangladesh at the time, Sheikh Hasina, while complaining about issues he was having with his wife. Mahadi made a call and got in contact with Air Vice Marshal Moffitt, who managed to keep him distracted by talking on the phone while the pilots called for help and landed the plane. The 148 passengers and crew were evacuated and rescued unharmed after the airport was sealed off. The commando operation lasted eight minutes, during which special forces agents tried to convince Mahadi to surrender. After their efforts proved futile, the suspect was shot and he died shortly after. Judging from their exchanges with Mahadi and his behavior aboard the plane, the authorities concluded that he was psychologically deranged. Number 4. Viviana Quiones 28-year-old Viviana Quiones boarded a Southwest Airlines flight from Sacramento to San Diego on May the 23rd of 2021. During the plane's descent into the destination airport, a flight attendant approached a woman and asked her to buckle her seatbelt, wear her COVID-19 face mask properly and stow her tray table. Instead of complying with the federal rules and regulations in place, Quiones stood up and without warning or provocation, punched the female flight attendant in the face. A male passenger then intervened as Kionis relentlessly tried to hit the flight attendant and kept pulling on her hair. The latter was left with a bloodied face and her attacker was escorted off the plane by Diego Harbor police officers upon landing. The confrontation was recorded on another passenger's cell phone and the footage was picked up by multiple media outlets in the incident's wake. At first, Kionis claimed to have acted in self-defense but she was charged with interference with flight crew members and attendants. Quiones eventually pleaded guilty to assault and faced a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison, in addition to a $250,000 fine. As a result of the attack, the unnamed flight attendant had sustained three chipped teeth, two of which needed crowns, along with a cut under her left eye that required stitches. Number 3. Richard Popkin Airport police officer N.J. Phillips while working at the Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport, was checking 43-year-old passenger Richard Popkin's carry-on luggage on the morning of December the 11th of 2011. As the bag went through the X-ray machine, staff noticed a 22 caliber pistol inside. It was loaded with five rounds of ammunition reportedly used to kill small animals. Airport workers took the gun out and handed it to Phillips, who pointed it at a screening table. While he was talking to Popkin about the clearing procedure for his gun, the officer accidentally fired a shot at his own face. A pellet fragment grazed him, but he didn't suffer any life-threatening injuries. In the unintentional discharge's wake, Popkin was arrested on weapon charges. He told officers that he'd kept the pistol for protection and that he had no intention of killing people. He also claimed to have forgotten that he'd removed the weapon from the checked luggage, allegedly due to worries about the weight limit. Number 2. Mark Anthony Serbo on May the 16th of 2021, a JetBlue flight from New York to San Francisco readjusted its course to Minneapolis because of a disruptive passenger. According to witness reports, 42-year-old Mark Anthony Serbo was acting erratically by walking up and down the aisle while holding a butter knife in his fist and making stabbing motions towards other passengers. When cabin crew went to his seat with the intention of telling him to wear his face mask, they saw a bag of white powdery substance on his tray. 
he was allegedly snorting the powder while causing a commotion and allegedly harassing and touching a female passenger inappropriately. Upon landing in Minneapolis, Serbo was arrested by law enforcement on suspicion of drug possession. MSP Airport Police took custody of the white substance bag, which weighed 0.8 ounces, and later revealed it had tested positive for cocaine. The FBI had taken over the investigation, according to the latest updates on the matter. Number 1. Dana Ghazi Mustafa on February the 22nd of 2020, during a United Airlines flight from Frankfurt to Dulles International Airport in Virginia, cabin crew heard a smoke detector going off outside the lavatory. They opened the door and found 27-year-old passenger Dana Ghazi Mustafa smoking inside. Flight attendants told the woman that smoking was not allowed on board, an aspect made abundantly clear by multiple signs and requested that she return to her seat. Mustafa reportedly became agitated and tried to go back to the lavatory. When she was finally settled in her seat, the woman started crying and told cabin crew members she was flying home after attending a funeral for her family, who had been killed by a drunk driver. Flight crew members moved her to another seat in an attempt to calm her down, but when she got there, Mustafa allegedly punched a TV monitor. Plane staff reported that the woman smelled of alcohol and a half-empty bottle of vodka was later found in her bag. Mustafa pushed flight attendants when they tried to stop her from entering the bathroom again while holding a lighter. Two air marshals on board attempted to restrain and handcuff her, but Mustafa fought back, repeatedly kicking one of them in the shins. The enraged woman then shouted she was going to stab everyone on the plane and then take her own life. Marshals eventually managed to handcuff her and Mustafa was arrested by FBI agents upon landing. She subsequently admitted that the story of her family dying in an accident had been a fabrication. She was charged, among others, with assault in a federal officer, which carried a maximum penalty of eight years in prison. Number 7. Keith Swainson in the summer of 2016, officers in West Houston, Texas, received complaints from 50-year-old Keith Swainson neighbors and went to his Kingsbridge Lane address. The man had reportedly gotten into an argument with other residents and, when law enforcement arrived at the scene, he refused to leave his house. A seven-hour standoff ensued during the course of which Swainson fired a shotgun several times at a SWAT team through a shattered window. One officer sustained minor injuries as he was struck by debris resulting from the shooting. The SWAT team eventually deployed tear gas into the home, which prompted Swainson to surrender. He was taken into custody on two counts of aggravated assault of a public servant and one count of making a threat. For his first court hearing, Swainson showed up with what appeared to be dried blood on the side of his face. In a subsequent blog post, Swainson would claim that he'd been a victim of police brutality and that a deputy had placed him in a grappling hold crushing his nose into his face. At some point during the hearing, Swainson began yelling out expletives directed at the judge and another person in attendance who'd criticized his behavior. The man was escorted out of the courtroom but was later reported to have been found not guilty by reason of insanity. Number 6. Jason Brian Dalton On February the 20th of 2016, Uber driver Jason Brian Dalton carried out a series of random shootings in Kalamazoo County, Michigan, which left six people dead and another two wounded. 45-year-old Dalton switched between two handguns, a Wolver P99 and the Glock 19, and shot his victims at an apartment complex, a car dealership, and outside a restaurant. He was also reported to have accepted fears without incident between the killings. One of the spree's survivors, 25-year-old Tiana Carruthers, was also its first victim, and she was shot four times in the parking lot of a Richland Township apartment. She suffered injuries to her arm, which left her needing reconstructive surgery, as well as her legs and back. Dalton was arrested following a manhunt and was quoted as telling the police that his actions were being controlled by a devil figure on the Uber app. The mass shooter appeared for a preliminary hearing on May the 22nd of 2016. As Carruthers was giving her testimony, Dalton interrupted her with what was described as somewhat indecipherable statements about people carrying black bags. She broke down in tears and cried out as, moments later, Dalton lunged at her, 
sheriff's deputies promptly restrained and removed him from the courtroom. The hearing was resumed later in the day with Dalton participating via video hookup. On January the 7th of 2019, he pleaded guilty to the plethora of charges against him and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Number 5. Nicholas Tuinstra After being found guilty of murder, Wisconsin man Nicholas Tuinstra was taken into his sentencing hearing on June the 2nd of 2016. In September, two years prior, he'd gunned down his estranged wife, Melissa, and her boyfriend, Justin Daniels. The woman had recently filed for divorce after she'd endured abuse which was said to have occurred in front of her and Nicholas's daughter. Following his arrest for double murder, Nicholas maintained that he was innocent and that he'd been framed. His trial lasted for about a week before the jury returned a guilty verdict. At sentencing, prosecutor Andrew Christensen began talking about the abuse that Melissa had suffered, which prompted an aggressive reaction from Nicholas. He shouted insults at Christensen and lunged towards him, insisting he'd never attacked her. However, as he was being escorted out of the courtroom, Nicholas yelled that she only got pushed that one time, but failed to appropriately contextualize the incident before the door closed on him. He was ultimately sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Number 4. Melissa Hardwick On July the 13th of 2021, Kentucky woman Melissa Hardwick was in family court, where Judge Jennifer Edwards was hearing a domestic violence order filed against her by her estranged husband. Surveillance footage from within the courtroom showed the man as he began to explain why the order had been filed. Before he could get a sentence in, Hardwick interrupted him and continued talking even after Edwards had warned her that she'd be held in contempt. Edwards then handed Hardwick a 10-day sentence for contempt. In the moments that followed, the latter jumped over the judge's bench and reached towards her. Two deputies reacted quickly, pulling Hardwick off the bench and escorting her out of the courtroom. Edwards was unharmed after experiencing what would later be described as a judge's worst nightmare. Hardwick was jailed for 120 days in the wake of her outburst and faced further charges of third-degree threatening, intimidating a participant in the legal process, and resisting arrest. Number 3. John McEnroe While they didn't occur in a legal setting, John McEnroe's court outbursts are undoubtedly a historical reference point. The tennis great was the only male player to simultaneously hold the number one position in both singles and doubles. He finished his career with a record-breaking 77 singles titles on the ATP Tour and 78 doubles titles. McEnroe also became known as Super Brat or the bad boy of tennis due to his confrontational on-court behavior that often landed him in trouble with tennis authorities. Arguably, the most memorable of his tantrums occurred at Wimbledon in 1981. McEnroe lashed out at an umpire who called his ball outside of the court, angrily uttering what would become his trademark line by exclaiming, you cannot be serious. He'd repeat the line during moments of frustration in subsequent matches, and it would even serve as the title of his autobiography. The umpire responded by awarding a point against the then 23-year-old. McEnroe went on to win the title by defeating his nemesis, Bjorn Borg, in the final. In 1984, he had another outburst during a tournament in Stockholm when, after disagreeing with a call made by the chair umpire, he demanded, answer my question, jerk. McEnroe then smashed his racket into a juice cart beside the court as boos echoed across the arena. He was suspended for three weeks as he'd exceeded the limit on fines, which coincidentally had originally been created due to his behavior. Look, you can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious! Number two, Kimberly Kessler. Kimberly Kessler was arrested by law enforcement in Nassau County, Florida, in connection to the murder of her co-worker, Jolene Cummings, in May of 2018. They'd worked together at the Tangles Hair Salon prior to the latter being reported missing by her mother on May the 14th. Cummings' body was never found, but evidence linked Kessler to her suspected murder. It included the fact that the woman had used 18 aliases and lived in 33 cities and 14 states. She'd been caught on CCTV driving the victim's car on May the 13th and had purchased tools believed to have been used to clean up the murder. Additionally, 
Traces of Cummings' blood were found in the hair salon, indicating that there'd been a violent struggle. During the legal proceedings that followed, Kessler exhibited disruptive and erratic behavior both while in detention and inside the courtroom. Corrections deputies testified during her trial about incidents that involved spreading human excrement on windows, making vulgar statements, refusing to eat, and acting out whenever Kessler didn't get what she wanted. She's evil. She's evil in the flesh, was how Nassau County Sheriff Bill Leeper described the accused killer. In 2019, Kessler first began screaming in court that one of her defense attorneys, Jordan Beard, was Cummings' cousin. It was proven to be untrue, but she nevertheless incessantly repeated the fictitious allegation in the hearings that followed, prompting her to be removed. In an outburst during a video hearing, she blankly stared into the camera while wearing a smock designed to prevent self-harm and suddenly screamed an obscenity at the judge. Given her tantrums, self-emaciation and the threat she'd made to end her life, the woman's mental health had been considered during the trial. At one point during a hearing, she turned on her defense team and told the judge that they were lying about her mental health. Kessler was ultimately deemed mentally competent and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Number one, Bryce Rhodes. Aspiring Kentucky rapper Bryce Rambo Rhodes was charged with triple murder in 2016 and in the aftermath made a series of court appearances marked by an aggressive and threatening attitude towards officials. In early May, Rhodes was accused of gunning down Christopher Jones in a case of mistaken identity, as he'd wrongly believed him to be a man targeted by a local gang. Later in the month, he fatally stabbed teenage half-brothers Maurice Gordon and Larry Ordway. They'd been part of Rhodes' entourage and had witnessed the shooting of Jones, which caused the rapper to fear they'd turn him into the authorities. Leading up to a hearing on September the 23rd of 2016, Rhodes spat on his attorney. Courtroom security staff placed a spit mask on his face, and he was strapped into a chair by wrists and ankles. In a video recorded incident, Rhodes told District Court Judge Amber Wolf that he could find out where she lived. Shocked, the judge repeated the threat to him, to which Rhodes added, you got family, I'll be out. The 25-year-old was thus charged with making threats and intimidating a participant in the legal process. He faced the death penalty, but his triple murder trial was repeatedly delayed, and he dismissed multiple attorneys during the proceedings. Rhodes threatened a judge yet again during a pretrial hearing in 2021, in which he also accused two Louisville detectives of fabricating their testimonies against him. Rhodes claimed that Jefferson Circuit Court Judge Charles Cunningham was denying him a fair chance and effective counsel for at least the third time. Rhodes asked for a new attorney and lashed out as Cunningham was explaining the difficulty of granting his request. The accused killer told the judge to do his job and promised that he was going to find out real quick what would happen if he failed. Number six, Daniel Redlick. In January of 2019, Michael Redlick, an executive for the University of Central Florida, was found dead at his Winter Park home. The emergency services were called by the man's stepdaughter turned wife, Danielle. The woman told officers that he'd likely succumbed to a heart attack, but they noticed that the scene was suspicious, with blood-soaked towels, mops soaked in blood, and a five-gallon bucket filled with pinkish water. There was also blood in a bathroom shower that was later confirmed as Michael's by DNA testing. The man had been married to Danielle's mother, Kathy, but those familiar with the circumstances reported that the marriage was more of a financial arrangement. The woman was dying of cancer, and he wanted her to have better medical coverage. Kathy passed away in 1999, and in the aftermath, Danielle and Michael, who was 20 years older than her, began a relationship. They were married for roughly 15 years and had two children together. Danielle was charged with second-degree murder as well as tampering with evidence. In connection to her husband's death, she admitted in court to fatally stabbing him but claimed to have done so in self-defense. As per her version of events, he'd seen flirtatious texts she'd exchanged with another man and became enraged. Michael pinned her against the kitchen island and started smothering her. Fearing for her life, Danielle stabbed him. The prosecution argued that she killed her spouse in cold blood because she no longer wanted to be in a relationship with him. Whatever the case might have been, after the stabbing, Daniel waited 11 hours before calling 911. 
A jury eventually cleared her of murder, but found her guilty of tampering with evidence. She was sentenced to 364 days in jail and 12 months of probation, in addition to being ordered to undergo a mental health evaluation. Number five, Tara Newell. In just 32 seconds, my life changed forever, is how Tara Newell described the killing of her stepfather, John Meehan, for People magazine. Tara's mother, Deborah, had met the man on an internet dating site in October of 2014. Within roughly a month, they moved into a house in Newport Beach, California. In spite of ongoing tension between the man and Deborah's daughters, Tara and Jacqueline, the couple got married in Las Vegas after only two months of dating. Unbeknownst to Deborah, Mian had a long history of conning, abusing, stalking, and manipulating women. His first wife, Tonya Sells, had helped put him through nursing school and only found out after 10 years of marriage that he'd lied about his birthday, full name, and previous drug charges. Deborah was blinded by her newfound love, but her family began to suspect that Mian, who was also a hardcore drug user, was hiding something. They hired a private detective who found out about his criminal past and the restraining orders against him from multiple women. In light of the information, Deborah tried to walk away from the relationship, but Mian convinced her to take him back as he always had a story to prove he hadn't been in the wrong. They moved into an apartment in Irvine, but in March of 2016, Deborah decided to cut him out of her life and moved to have the marriage annulled. The decision resulted in the man demanding money and sending her threatening messages with promises to ruin her life. He was caught on surveillance footage, stealing Deborah's Jaguar from outside her office in Irvine. The vehicle was found a block away covered in gasoline and with mild fire damage. Then on August the 20th of 2016, Mian attacked 24-year-old Terra on the rooftop parking lot of her Newport Beach apartment building. The much larger man approached her from behind with a knife and tried to force her into his car. Terra fought back relentlessly and after they'd wrestled on the ground, got hold of the knife. She stabbed me in 13 times, including once through the eye. In the immediate aftermath, Terra called her mother to say, I'm really, really sorry. I think I killed your husband. The 57-year-old man did indeed succumb to his injuries four days later, but given his campaign of abuse against the Newell family and beyond, the law and public opinion were unanimously on Terra's side. The case of Dirty John, as the man had been nicknamed since college, became the subject of a true crime podcast and a Bravo series starring Eric Banner in the titular role. Number four, Sabrina Zunik. When she was in her early teens and attending Wycliffe High School in Ohio, Sabrina Zunik displayed a propensity for violence, often getting in fistfights. Zunik had been mainly raised by her paternal grandmother, as her parents were often in legal trouble and struggled with substance abuse. She was eventually sent to the Emma Cayley Receiving Home, a behavior modification center in Painesville. After bouncing from one foster family to another, Zunik was placed with Kevin and Lisa Noffel at their home in Willoughby Hills in the early 2010s. Lisa was a social worker in the abuse department of the Cuyahoga County Department of Children and Family Services, while her husband worked as a truck driver. The couple already had several daughters between them and expected Zunik to easily fit in. However, not long after the troubled teen was placed in their home, she and 42-year-old Kevin secretly began having intimate relations. Lisa became suspicious of them and expressed an intention of sending Zunik away, so they planned to murder her. On the night of November the 16th of 2012, while wearing a ski mask, Zunik attacked her foster mother in her bed. The 41-year-old woman fought back and one of her other teenage daughters, who'd heard the commotion, tried to intervene. But Zunik couldn't be stopped. She stabbed and cut Lisa more than 150 times with a 10-inch serrated knife. The police arrived at the home to find her drenched in blood, claiming she couldn't remember anything. Six months after the killing, partly because she'd felt abandoned by Kevin, Zunik told the authorities, that they'd been sleeping together and revealed the full extent of the murder plot. She claimed that the man had manipulated her into killing his wife. He'd also told the teen they'd build a future together using the $750,000 from Lisa's life insurance and raise the man's young daughter. Kevin had also given the teenager instructions on how to carry out the killing 
and told her to feign memory loss upon its discovery. Zunik pleaded guilty to aggravated murder in August of 2014 and was sentenced to life with parole after 30 years. She testified against Kevin at his trial and he was given the same sentence after a jury found him guilty of conspiracy to commit aggravated murder. Number 3. Julianne Bander In early April of 2022, a San Antonio woman was arrested in connection to the fatal shooting of her stepfather outside of his West Side home. Local police found 49-year-old Carlos Chavez suffering from gunshot injuries on the sidewalk near the front gate of his residence on April the 21st of 2020. According to an affidavit, the man had been in front of the house when a silver car pulled up close to him. A passenger inside the vehicle shot Chavez multiple times and he later passed away in a local hospital. Investigators subsequently examined location data and text exchanges from the cell phone of Julie Ann Bander, the victim's stepdaughter. Messages between them revealed that Chavez was waiting for her outside while her phone was on location in the time frame that the crime was committed. Additionally, the owner of the silver car told the police that she'd loaned the vehicle to Bander and another man on the day of the shooting. Two years after the murder, the 28-year-old face tattooed stepdaughter was arrested and charged, but a reason for the shooting wasn't disclosed. Number 2. Ashley Martinson Teenager Ashley Martinson gunned down her stepfather and shot her mother at the home they shared in Pyle, Wisconsin. On March the 7th of 2015, Thomas Ayers, aged 37, had a history of being verbally and physically abusive towards his wife Jennifer and Martinson. His aggressive behavior in the household reportedly extended to Martinson's two stepsisters and half-sister, who were younger. Thomas had passed convictions for assault, kidnapping, and domestic abuse. He was forbidden from owning firearms, but possessed several, which he kept loaded and accessible in the house. On the night of March the 6th, a heated argument erupted between Jennifer Thomas and Martinson when they found out that she'd been dating a 22-year-old man named Ryan Sisko. The following day, 17-year-old Martinson fatally shot Thomas with a shotgun and then stabbed Jennifer to death. She subsequently locked her younger siblings in the closet with a supply of food and drink before fleeing with Cisco to meet his relatives in Tennessee. Police were called to the scene on March the 8th by Martinson's eldest stepsister. The teen immediately became a suspect based on eyewitness reports from her step-siblings and the fact that she'd fled the scene. She and Cisco were captured in Boone County, Indiana. The man was only charged with a parole violation, but Martinson was arrested on two counts of first-degree intentional homicide and false imprisonment. The teen initially told investigators that her mother had killed Thomas and that she'd knifed her in self-defense, but then changed her story. She claimed to have taken one of her stepfather's guns to her room. When Martinson heard him knock on the door, she decided to kill him as she felt he deserved to die more. She began firing, hitting him in the neck and then shot him in the head before stabbing Jennifer, who'd been alerted by the gunshots. Martinson initially tried the insanity plea before accepting a plea deal of second-degree murder that saw her sentenced to 23 years in prison. Number 1. JT On July the 23rd of 2015, a woman was stabbed to death by her preteen stepdaughter at her apartment in Elkhart, Indiana. The killer, only identified as JT, set fire to the home before knifing 50-year-old Maria Torres, who died at the scene. After she was taken into custody, JT revealed that she had acted at the direction of a fictional clown called Laughing Jack, a character found on the creepy pasta website. Internet lore describes Laughing Jack as a character that befriends young people as their imaginary friend before killing them or forcing them to kill. Months before stabbing Torres, JT reported hearing voices, had developed an alter ego and begged her father for help. She was found unfit to stand trial after being diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and disassociative identity order, also known as multiple personality disorder. As of the latest updates, she was held at the juvenile detention center in Goshen, where she wasn't allowed to have any sharp objects near her or in her reach after being labeled a danger to herself and others. As noted by her public defender, Holly Curtis, JT had been failed by everyone as 16 psychiatric facilities and the state had refused to take her. 
Number nine, Tianis Jones. A young pregnant woman was arrested for throwing a violent tantrum at a McDonald's in Lakeland, Florida on May the 19th of 2022. According to the Polk County Sheriff's Office, the incident began at around 5.30 p.m. when 22-year-old Tianis Jones arrived at the restaurant to pick up an order she'd placed online earlier. She proceeded through the drive through line but was reportedly told that there had been an error with her food. The employees asked her to wait at the third drive through window while the mistake was being corrected. But Jones instead parked her vehicle and stormed inside to confront the workers face to face. Roughly a minute into the ensuing interaction, Jones allegedly became violent, striking a small plastic sign and several bottles in the direction of the employees. Shortly thereafter, one of the young woman's relatives entered the restaurant and attempted to calm her down. Her outburst continued for about 10 minutes and resulted in approximately $100 worth of damages. Jones eventually dialed 911 to report that the McDonald's had tried to cheat her out of her money and officers were subsequently dispatched to the scene. Before their arrival, however, Jones's meltdown culminated with the young woman lifting up her shirt to expose her midriff to the workers before finally agreeing to leave. The following day, she was taken into police custody on charges of burglary with assault, criminal mischief, disorderly conduct, and misuse of 911. Number eight, the Woolworths meltdown. A viral video posted to Reddit in April of 2021 showed an amputee in a wheelchair getting into an altercation with employees at a Woolworths store in the Australian harbour city of Newcastle. New South Wales police made their way to the scene of the incident, which occurred on the evening of October the 21st of 2020. After receiving reports of a man exhibiting aggressive behaviour, the wheelchair-bound individual initially crashed through a security partition at the Market Town shopping centre. His public meltdown continued as he then got into a heated argument with a female employee, allegedly tossing items and spitting at her before moving to the entrance of the supermarket. He started hurling shopping baskets at bread displays in the store, prompting a security guard to intervene. The man charged at the guard, causing his wheelchair to fall over onto its side, at which point he kept aggressively pursuing him by pulling his body across the floor. A female bystander eventually helped the man back into his wheelchair and he left the scene. It was reported that the belligerent man was ultimately not charged in connection to his rage-fueled outburst. Number seven, Martin Alvarez. Florida police made their way to a Waffle House on Del Prado Boulevard South in Cape Corral on January the 19th of 2022 after receiving reports of a disturbance. When they arrived at the scene, officers came upon local man Martin Alvarez as he was in the midst of an outburst about the way in which the restaurant's employees were cooking his bacon. The shirtless man wanted to make sure that the workers were preparing the meal to his liking. His intervention, however, allegedly involved him shouting a barrage of profanities at them that included racial slurs. He subsequently resisted the police's attempts to detain him, prompting officers to threaten him with tasers. Alvarez was ultimately taken into custody on charges of disorderly intoxication, resisting an officer, and simple assault with intent to do violence. Number six, Adam Whittingham. On February the 9th of 2019, during a Ryanair flight from Morocco to Manchester, England, a passenger got into a row with other travelers as well as the cabin crew and was ultimately arrested for causing a mid-air disturbance. According to subsequent reports, a fellow passenger had initially approached 32-year-old Adam Whittingham to talk to him about the Manchester United jersey he was wearing. Whittingham allegedly became abusive towards the other man, prompting him to move his seat three rows back. Shortly after takeoff, Whittingham reportedly began speaking very loudly to fellow passengers as he drank whiskey straight from a bottle. He asked the cabin supervisor for a glass, but the staffer indicated that he was busy. Whittingham then began sifting through the supervisor's trolley himself and allegedly pushed a crew member who'd asked him to stop. The man's hostile behavior continued after he returned to his seat, prompting the supervisor to ask him to put his whiskey bottle away. Whittingham refused and he subsequently began physically attacking some of the travelers sitting near him. One witness claimed to have seen him elbow someone in the face, while a number of passengers complained that he was violently banging his head against the back of the seat in front of him while shouting a string of profanities. When asked to calm down, Whittingham allegedly mocked a female passenger's accent. 
As the plane finally neared its destination, the belligerent flyer was seen punching the man next to him, knocking out one of his teeth in the process. Upon the aircraft's arrival in Manchester, Whittingham was met by police officers, who pinned him to the ground and handcuffed him, reportedly as witnesses cheered them on. The man who reportedly bit one of the arrested officers was ultimately jailed for a period of 20 months following a trial at Minshall Street Crown Court. Number 5. Henry Arce Caballero Florida man Henry Arce Caballero got into an argument with workers at a Checkers restaurant in Lago on November the 4th of 2020. Police officers were called to the scene at about 11.30 p.m. after employees had reported that an angry customer was shouting and beating on the glass window of the drive through The source of Arce Caballero's ire was that his order had been botched because there was no lettuce on his sandwich. The man reportedly refused to identify himself when approached by the officers, despite their repeated requests that he produce his driver's license. Law enforcement removed the suspect from his vehicle and, although he'd allegedly behaved uncooperatively at first, they ultimately managed to take him into custody. Court records indicated that Arce Caballero was charged with resisting an officer without violence and disorderly conduct in connection to his public meltdown. Number 4. The Attack on the WUSA-9 Crew Staffers from the WUSA-9 news station in Washington, D.C. went to a house in the city's southeast region to cover a hostage situation that unfolded in the early hours of October the 30th of 2013. Reporter Bruce Johnson and his photographer Daniel Gill were speaking with nearby residents when a woman watching from the second floor window of the house they were covering began yelling at them to leave. They refused to comply with her demands, at which point the unidentified woman became incensed and went down to the street to confront them. The news crew contended that they were under no obligation to leave as they were standing on a public street, but the woman continued to shout at them before spraying mace in their general direction. She then struck both Johnson and Gill with one punch and knocked over the latter's video camera. To avoid further violence, the news crew left the area. While speaking about the incident later on, Johnson indicated that he wasn't sure whether the woman had been involved in the reported hostage situation, but added, it was clear she'd been under a lot of stress. Number 3. Anna Storelli As reported by multiple news outlets in April of 2017, California woman Anna Storelli was waiting in line at a restaurant in Santa Monica when she became enraged by a couple sitting nearby. Storelli's meltdown was captured in a seven-minute video, during which she was shown yelling at a man and woman for allegedly kissing in public. She proceeded to launch an expletive-laden tirade at the couple, claiming that their public display of affection was making her and others feel uncomfortable. The man involved in the interaction later clarified that he'd only kissed his girlfriend on the forehead in the moments leading up to Storelli's outburst. The latter reportedly accused the young woman of being an escort before demanding a refund from the restaurant and threatening to have the cashier fired for their perceived mistreatment of her. Upon the video's release on social media, Storelli was widely ridiculed for her behavior, with many considering her reaction to the couple's kiss to have been an extreme overreaction. Number 2. Blake A. Fleissig and Anna C. Kuzman Law enforcement in Minneapolis, Minnesota received reports of a mid-air meltdown by a pair of unruly airplane passengers on December the 28th of 2016. It was reported that roughly an hour after Delta Flight 2565 had taken off from the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport, Blake A. Fleissig and his girlfriend, Anna C. Kuzman, had gotten into an altercation with others on board the aircraft. It started after the latter had allegedly left her seat to use the bathroom. She had done so within moments of the plane being airborne, which was prohibited by air travel regulations. A flight attendant requested that she return to her seat, at which point she became aggressive and created a disruption in the cabin. Kuzman and Fleissig reportedly got so belligerent that the pilots were forced to divert the Los Angeles-bound flight back to the airport from which it had departed. The aircraft was met by Minneapolis police officers who took the two suspects into custody. As Fleissig was being escorted off the plane, he allegedly punched another passenger, prompting the officers to tackle him to the ground. Both Fleissig and Kuzman were initially charged with disorderly conduct, although it was reported that the former, who was the vice president of Citibank, had the charges against him dropped by prosecutors. Number 1. Jessica Mims Shortly after 10 p.m. on January the 3rd of 2017, Illinois woman 
Jessica Mims entered a Subway restaurant in Evergreen Park and requested to use the restroom. The 23-year-old subsequently left without ordering any food. However, a short time later, she reportedly returned and asked to go back into the bathroom to look for money she'd purportedly left behind on accident. A store employee accompanied Mims to search for the misplaced cash, which they couldn't find. The young woman's behavior then became erratic and she accused the unnamed worker of having taken the money she'd lost. The situation ultimately devolved into a physical altercation between the two. Mims's public meltdown began with her pepper spraying the worker and progressed to her exiting the restaurant and smashing one of its windows. The young woman was consequently arrested and charged with unlawful use of a weapon and criminal damage to property. It subsequently emerged that Mims, who suffered from schizophrenia and depression, hadn't been taking her prescribed medication at the time of her outburst. Number 8. Nasley Ortiz and Benjamin Green Texas couple Nasley Ortiz and Benjamin Green were in a pickup truck, traveling north along Interstate 45 on July the 26th of 2022, when they became embroiled in a violent road rage incident. According to the Harris County Sheriff's Office, the couple began tailgazing another motorist who subsequently brake-checked them. In a fit of rage, Ortiz and Green followed the car off an exit near Parramatta Lane. 34-year-old Green, a reported Navy veteran, allegedly got out of the truck and approached the other driver whom he then assaulted. The victim reportedly attempted to flee the scene, prompting 40-year-old Ortiz to exit the truck with a handgun and fire into the back seat passenger window of the other vehicle. The motorist continued driving away, at which point Ortiz allegedly fired another round in his direction, instead striking a car dealership building located nearby. It was reported that the victim had been admitted to the hospital with a possible graze wound, but was said to have been in stable condition. It subsequently emerged that there had been a two-year-old inside the victim's car at the time of his run-in with Ortiz and Green, but the child was reported as having fortunately been left unharmed. The rageful pickup drivers were consequently taken into custody and charged with aggravated assault, while their bonds were reportedly set at $150,000 for Green and $300,000 for Ortiz. Number 7. Amy Carter In the late evening hours of February the 15th of 2015, Florida police were called to the intersection of East Pass Street and Formosa Avenue in Orlando after receiving reports of a woman throwing a tantrum in the roadway. Upon their arrival, officers encountered 31-year-old Amy Carter unclothed in the middle of the street blocking traffic. According to eyewitness testimony, Carter, a local hairdresser, had performed an intimate act on herself in front of a couple's car before climbing on top of the hood and hurling a cell phone at the vehicle stopped behind it. When the police attempted to remove her from the street, she offered strong resistance, allegedly pulling on them and kicking her legs in the air. In the resulting arrest report, officers noted that Carter appeared to have been under the influence of some sort of heavy substance at the time of her bizarre public incident. She was booked into the Orange County Jail on charges of criminal mischief and exposure of reproductive organs. It was later detailed how the unhinged woman had caused approximately $1,500 in damage to the vehicle she had mounted, the owners of which subsequently expressed their intention to press charges against her. Number 6. Jeffrey Epstein Florida doctor Jeffrey Epstein was filmed throwing a seemingly random temper tantrum at Orlando International Airport. On the morning of August the 16th of 2018, the 59-year-old man who shared no relation to the identically named New York financier and convicted felon was preparing to board an American Airlines flight when the situation abruptly escalated. Epstein began berating the employee stationed behind the counter after she'd indicated that he may miss his flight. Although none of the airline's employees or the other travelers proceeded to interact with the irate man, he continued ranting anyway, as was captured in a cell phone video taken by a nearby witness. Shortly thereafter, as Epstein's demonstrative raving persisted, Orlando police arrived at the scene and asked him to leave. Citing concern for the safety of others in the airport, Epstein chose not to comply with law enforcement's instructions. However, it was later described how the man became even angrier after overhearing the officers talking about the white froth 
that had reportedly formed around his lips during his outburst. At one point after Epstein allegedly kicked one of the policemen, they sprayed mace at him and took him to the ground. As the officers placed the man in handcuffs, he shouted that they were treating him like a black person. Epstein was charged with battery on a law enforcement officer, resisting officer with violence and trespassing after warning in connection to the incident. Speaking with an Orlando radio station, after his release from county jail on bond, Epstein claimed that during his public blow-up, he was trying to make a point about the manner in which police officers interact with suspects. Number 5. Milo Ritchie 24-year-old model Milo Ritchie was involved in an altercation with security at Heathrow Airport on the morning of January the 19th of 2019. The young man, who was reported as being the son of prominent singer-songwriter Lionel Ritchie, had become furious with an airline employee who refused to allow him onto a flight at Terminal 5. As tensions escalated, Ritchie allegedly claimed he had a bomb in his bag which he'd detonate if he wasn't let on the plane. He was subsequently approached by airport security, at which point he was accused of punching a guard. Following the physical altercation, Richie was taken into the custody of local police, but later released after reportedly accepting a caution, allowing him to avoid criminal prosecution on charges of communicating false information, causing a bomb hoax and battery. Number 4. Trey Songs. R&B singer Tremaine Alden Neverson, better known by the stage name Trey Songs, was arrested following an on-stage outburst in December of 2016. According to subsequent reports, Neverson had been performing at the Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit, Michigan, on the evening of the incident. Towards the end of the night, the venue informed him that the concert would need to be cut short in order to conform to an 11.30 p.m. curfew. As was shown in cell phone footage, Captured by members of the audience, Neverson became infuriated by the decision to end his performance early and began throwing various objects, including microphones. Detroit police officers subsequently charged the stage to stop him, at which point a police sergeant was reportedly struck in the head by an object the artist had thrown and consequently suffered a concussion. Neverson was then arrested for malicious destruction of property as well as resisting and obstructing arrest. In August of 2017, the singer pleaded guilty to two reduced counts of disturbing the peace and was ultimately sentenced to 18 months of probation, substance screening, and anger management classes. Number 3. John Walter Miles Shortly after 10 p.m. on April the 9th of 2021, former U.S. Army Sergeant John Walter Miles unleashed the racist, expletive-laden tirade towards employees of a Food Lion grocery store in Sumter, South Carolina. According to a statement subsequently released by the local police department, the incident had been sparked after a clerk had refused to sell alcohol to Miles, who was already intoxicated at the time. The 27-year-old man flew into a fit of rage, allegedly using racial slurs and various other profanities as he loudly chastised the grocery store's workers. Miles' girlfriend attempted to hold him back and lead him out of the store several times, but he repeatedly pushed her aside to continue berating the employees. A Sumter police officer was called to the scene, at which point Miles was escorted to his vehicle and he then left with his girlfriend and mother. A video recording of the former army sergeant's outburst was widely disseminated on social media, reportedly amassing more than 50,000 Twitter views within the first week. As the situation began to garner national attention, a media relations officer at Fort Jackson in South Carolina publicly clarified that Miles had already ended his association with the U.S. Army at the time of the incident. A warrant for the man's arrest was later issued and he consequently faced charges of trespassing and aggravated breach of peace. After being booked at a Sumter County Detention Center, Miles was placed on house arrest with a $15,465 bond. Number 2. Abigail Elphick In a viral video that surfaced online in the summer of 2021, New Jersey woman Abigail Elphick was captured having a meltdown in the middle of a Victoria's Secret store at the Short Hills Mall. The incident was reportedly triggered after another female shopper identified as Ajioma Yukenta 
and attempted to purchase some merchandise with a coupon. When the video recording began, Elphick was shown charging towards the other woman with her hand raised as if she was poised to strike. Upon realizing that Yukenta was filming her, Elphick's demeanor promptly shifted from one of aggression and anger to one of hysterical self-pity. She started crying, chasing Yukenta around the store and demanding that the recording be stopped. As Elphick's public breakdown continued, she at one point began to convulse and screech in an infantile attempt to make it appear as though she'd lost control of her behavior. According to an update, Yukenta later posted to her social media. Elphick eventually contacted the police and outright lied about what happened. She allegedly claimed that it had been Yukenta who'd initially provoked the confrontation and consequently caused her to have a panic attack. In the incident's aftermath, the overwhelming majority of the general public sided with Yukenta, who ultimately received more than $100,000 in donations to help cover the legal fees associated with her court case against Elphick. Number 1. Singaporean Road Rage Incident On July the 31st of 2019, a video surfaced online in which a man and a woman were shown getting into an altercation with one another on a roadway in Singapore. In the recording, the warring motorists were captured shouting profane insults at one another as they stood in the road between their respective vehicles. At one point after the two people had started shoving each other, a bystander approached and tried to break them up, telling them to stop fighting and call the police, although it wasn't made clear what had specifically triggered the driver's dispute. The woman's truck did appear to have sustained some sort of damage in the video. Tensions between the two parties ultimately reached a boiling point when the female driver retrieved a tire iron from her truck, which she then used to smash one of the man's side mirrors. The authorities were eventually called to the scene, at which point both the 23-year-old man and the woman, aged 24, were taken into custody on charges of a fray or disturbing the peace. Number 9. Camilla McMillie An Alabama mother went viral following a violent tantrum that she threw at the Miami International Airport after losing sight of her two young children. The incident, which took place in December of 2022, began after 25-year-old Camilla McMillie realized her children went with her while she was checking in for a connecting American Airlines flight. A witness later told the media that the woman went into panic mode as she started screaming and ordering an airline worker to go look for her children. McMillie's outburst culminated with her tearing items off a counter and throwing a computer at the gate agent, which hit them and caused bruising. She was later determined to have inflicted roughly $10,000 worth of damage to airport property. Her children were eventually located after they'd walked off to use the restroom without telling her. McMillie was initially detained by US Customs and Border Patrol agents before she was arrested by the police. She was charged with aggravated battery, criminal mischief, and disorderly conduct. McMillie was interviewed by a media outlet following her release from custody on Christmas Eve and apologized for her behavior. Number 8. Marquise Burks Are you French to go? Yeah, what? Well. They say the Chicago woman would not go peacefully. She was charged with one kind of tampering for every time she hung up the phone when they were trying. After she was kicked out of a Miami Beach hotel in May of 2021, a Chicago woman visiting South Florida refused to go peacefully and threw a temper tantrum that ended in her arrest. After getting into an argument with the employees of the Paloma Hotel, she went behind the reception desk. Burks knocked over clear dividers that had been put in place because of the coronavirus pandemic and started striking the employees with her fists. She hung up the hotel's phone several times as the workers attempted to call law enforcement. When they finally arrived at the scene, Burks reportedly told the officers that she would have hit them too if not for their official position. She was arrested on charges that included tampering, one count for each time she'd hung up the phone, criminal mischief, and disorderly conduct. Number 7. Ellie Wayne On June the 1st of 2020, English teenager Ellie Wayne and her boyfriend, Kieran Brown, got into an argument at the home they shared in Willenhall, Coventry. 18-year-old Wayne, who had a history of anxiety and depression, demanded that Brown leave the residence. It would emerge that she'd been drinking and smoking cannabis 
Earlier in the day, Wayne then attacked her boyfriend with a kitchen knife outside their home in what was later described as a fit of temper because things weren't going her way. One of the knife strikes pierced Brown's heart and he was rushed to the hospital where he died soon after his arrival at around 10 p.m. Following her arrest, Wayne was interviewed by law enforcement and told them that she never loved anyone as much as she'd loved Brown. She subsequently tried claiming self-defense in court, but a witness reported that Wayne had told them she'd taken the knife with the intention of stabbing anyone who came near her. The teenager was found guilty of murder in December of 2020 and given a life sentence with a minimum of 17 years served. Number 6. Tara Palmer Tomkinson In 2014, at around Christmas, British socialite Tara Palmer Tomkinson was arrested by eight armed police officers at London Heathrow Airport. The former model, who had a documented history of drug and alcohol addiction, was flying out to an exclusive ski resort in Switzerland to celebrate her upcoming birthday. At some point as she was waiting for her flight, Palmer Tomkinson started screaming at people in the lounge and the police were called when she tried to run back through security. The ensuing interaction was captured on video and it showed her arguing with two officers. As the socialite's frustration increased amid a string of profanities directed at the police, she ripped off pieces of her own hair extensions and threw them at the officer's feet. Palmer Tomkinson then hurled her coat on the ground as a third officer moved towards her. Five more officers then arrived and worked to restrain and handcuff the enraged socialite. The media would initially report that the 42-year-old threw a tantrum after she'd been refused access to British Airways' first-class lounge. Palmer Tomkinson vehemently denied that version of events on social media and claimed that she'd become distressed upon seeing people taking pictures of her and hearing them laugh about her behind her back. She recounted that she'd become upset and eventually lost her temper after a man had approached her and said, you are not fit to travel, you are crying. The woman, initially arrested for using threatening, abusive or insulting words or behavior or disorderly behavior, was believed to have been cautioned and released without charge. She reportedly booked another flight to Switzerland a day later. Number 5. Tong Xiaohua a Chinese police chief was fired in mid-August of 2019, roughly two weeks after his wife had been captured on video attacking another motorist during a road rage meltdown in the city of Chongqing. The clip, which was extensively shared online, showed Li Yu confronting the driver in question after he'd blocked her red Porsche when she attempted to make an illegal U-turn on a pedestrian crossing. Further information revealed that Li, who was wearing a designer outfit, mocked the unnamed man for having a beggar's car before slapping him across the face without warning. He retaliated with a slap of his own, and the strike resulted in Li's hat flying off her head and towards a bystander who was recording the incident on their phone. More footage later surfaced of Li as she was bragging about how she'd managed to avoid legal punishment for running red lights, speeding and other violations. Following the incident, Chongqing police revealed that she'd been fined for making the illegal turn in addition to having points deducted from her license for wearing shoes and a hat deemed unsafe for driving. The authorities then launched an investigation into the woman's husband, Chief Tong Xiaohua, who was eventually fired for disciplinary violations. It wasn't officially disclosed if the termination of his employment had been related to the road rage incident, but many online users suspected that had been the case. Number 4. Walmart Karen In December of 2022, an unidentified Texas woman was filmed during a Walmart confrontation with a police officer. The specifics of the interaction weren't disclosed, but the woman, who was subsequently dubbed Walmart Karen, on social media was seen standing next to an overturned stand and it was suspected that she'd caused a scene while inside the store. As tensions escalated, the woman demanded that the cop respect her while he ordered her to get down on her knees. He then fired a taser, striking the belligerent woman between the neck and chest. She let out a shriek before falling straight back to the ground. She then rolled onto her stomach and was tasered again while being ordered to place her hands behind her back. The police officer shocked her a third time before she was finally subdued 
It wasn't made immediately clear if she was charged with a crime or only escorted out of the building. Number 3. Karen Worley Drake Florida woman Karen Worley Drake was arrested in the fall of 2013 in Dunellen, Marion County, after she failed sobriety tests and became aggressive towards law enforcement. A sheriff's deputy had initially noticed Drake's SUV parked halfway onto Southwest 129th Terrace Road. The deputy saw the 51-year-old and her dog inside the vehicle and, upon approaching it, asked her to open the door. A strong smell of alcohol emanated from the SUV and Drake was found naked from the waist down. The deputy noticed some pants in the vehicle and asked the woman to dress herself. Drake then failed sobriety exercises and refused to take a breathalyzer test. When she was told that she was under arrest for DUI, she became aggressive and briefly struggled with the deputy. She was taken to Marion County Jail on a $1,000 bond while her pet was placed in the custody of the county's animal services. Police records indicated that the incident marked Drake's second DUI offense. Number 2. Nushin Norbakash In November of 2022, a woman dubbed DC Karen by online users went viral after she was recorded directing a racially charged tirade at an Uber driver. The incident unfolded on November the 23rd when the woman, whom social media users identified as Nushin Norbakash, lost her temper over a phone charger. She began bombarding the Uber driver, a black man, with a series of slurs as they stood on a Cathedral Heights street in the US capital. Two videos surfaced in the aftermath, one taken by the driver and another by a resident on the street. Norbakush was recorded calling the man illiterate, schizophrenic, and a slave. While the driver was recording her, he said, Hey Karen, you're going to be all over the internet as a racist woman. The woman then suggested that he didn't like her because she was white and he wasn't, before also calling him the N-word several times in a row. Norbakush was banned from using the Uber app in the verbal attack's wake, but it wasn't made immediately clear if she'd face criminal charges. Number 1. Karen Canwell Off-duty police constable Karen Canwell was at the King Edward VII pub in the market town of Rushton, Northamptonshire, England, on December the 11th of 2021. A fracas erupted inside the establishment under unspecified circumstances, and the conflict eventually moved into the street. As it unfolded, Canwell struck a member of door staff in the chest twice. Canwell's colleagues were consequently called to the scene and took her into custody. She denied common assault in court but was found guilty of it in November of 2022 and was fined nearly $2,000. As of the latest information on the incident, Northamptonshire police launched a misconduct investigation and Canwell faced being terminated from the force. Up until the pub incident, she was a respected member of law enforcement who'd been nominated for a National Bravery Award in 2019. During a suspected acid attack that had occurred in Northampton, Canwell ignored the injury she'd suffered in order to help other victims. Number 5. Philip Simulane one morning in 2013, Christina Edkins traveled to school by way of a rush hour bus in the West Midlands region of England. After boarding the public transit vehicle in the city of Birmingham, as she did almost every day, the young woman suddenly became the target of a random knife attack. It was perpetrated by another one of the bus's passengers, who was later identified as 23-year-old Walsall resident Philip Simulane. Over the course of the unprompted assault, Edkins was fatally stabbed and her attacker was consequently arrested by local police. Simulane, who'd previously been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, later pleaded guilty to manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility, and he was thus detained indefinitely under the Mental Health Act of 1983. In the wake of the deadly incident, officials at the Birmingham and Solihull Mental Health NHS Foundation Trust launched an investigation. It was subsequently determined that Edkins' death could have been prevented if Simulane had been given proper mental health treatment. The young man had previously been incarcerated for the assault and battery of his mother. The NHS's probe found that when he was released from custody, it should have been evident that his mental state would only continue to deteriorate and that he was likely to reoffend. Similane murdered Edkins within three months of his release from jail. Number four, Alexander Lewis Ranwell. Englishman, 
Alexander Lewis Ranwell was arrested on February the 8th of 2019 for trespassing on a farm in Ilfracombe. He was released the following morning but was then taken back into custody later in the day for attacking an elderly farmer. During his second arrest, Lewis Ranwell allegedly tried to grab one of the officer's tasers and exhibited what was described as aggressive and bizarre behavior. Upon posting bail on February the 10th, Lewis Ranwell traveled to Exeter where he broke into the home of 80-year-old Anthony Payne and bludgeoned him to death. Shortly thereafter, he walked to another nearby house and murdered a pair of twins identified as Dick and Roger Carter, aged 84. It would later emerge that Lewis Ranwell had committed the triple homicide while he was suffering from paranoid delusions, under the influence of which he'd become convinced that his victims were actually criminals guilty of vile offenses. At about 5 a.m. the following morning, Lewis Ranwell went to the Rougemont Hotel and demanded breakfast from the night manager. When he was told that his meal wouldn't be ready for another hour, the 28-year-old threw a glass bowl at the employee and threatened to kill him. The manager then fled into the basement, but Lewis Ranwell gave chase, armed with a knife he'd stolen from the hotel's kitchen. The police arrived a short time later and took him into custody, finally putting an end to his rampage. In the aftermath, it was determined that Lewis Ranwell should have been detained in a mental health hospital upon his initial arrest, given that he'd been exhibiting clear signs of a deteriorating mental state and paranoid behavior. After standing trial for his crimes, Lewis Ranwell was found not guilty by reason of insanity and was issued an indefinite hospital order. In March of 2022, it was reported that Lewis Ranwell was actually suing the National Health Service and local police departments for their alleged shortcomings in his mental health care while he was in custody. The lawsuit claimed that the murders of Payne and the Carter twins were a direct result of the authorities' failure to conduct a proper mental health assessment of the man, which would have ensured that he was never released in the first place. Number 3. Anthony Garver and Mark Alexander Adams Two mental patients with documented histories of violent crimes escaped from a lower security unit of Western State Hospital in Lakewood, Washington, on April the 6th of 2016. Officials reported that 28-year-old Anthony Garver and Mark Alexander Adams, aged 58, had gotten out of the facility through a broken window. Adams, who'd been admitted to the hospital after being accused of domestic assault in 2014, was found roughly 15 miles from downtown Seattle. The following day, and apprehended by the authorities, Garver remained on the run for a few days after their initial escape. He first fled to Seattle where he bought a bus ticket to Spokane under the alias John Anderson. Upon his arrival in Spokane, Garver reportedly contacted his parents and asked them for his passport, which he'd reportedly intended to use to fly to Morocco. Instead of complying with their fugitive son's requests, the man's parents notified the police that he'd been in contact with them. Officers eventually tracked Garver down to a wooded mountainous area of Spokane Valley, where he'd hidden himself under a pile of debris. After being taken back into custody, Garver, whose criminal trial had previously been delayed due to mental health concerns, faced a legal proceeding stemming from the 2013 killing of Philippa Evans Lopez. The 20-year-old woman had been found tied to her bed with over 24 stab wounds and a slashed throat. In October of 2019, Garver was convicted of first-degree murder in connection to Evans Lopez's death. He was consequently sentenced to 32 years in prison plus several years of community custody following his release. Number 2. Jeffrey Barry In the early morning hours of July the 7th of 2016, security cameras at a supported living apartment building in the English city of Bristol captured resident Jeffrey Barry emerging from his neighbor's flat covered in blood. The 57-year-old subsequently called the emergency service to report that he'd murdered Camille Ahmed, a man whom he'd threatened to harm on several occasions in recent years. Barry reportedly told the phone operator, I warned the staff, I warned the crisis team, he's dead now. Investigators gathered that the staff to which he was referring was the group of mental health professionals assigned to his care at the Signet Hospital, Q-Stoke. He'd been released from the facility only hours before his chilling phone call confession. Barry had previously been admitted to Corlington Road Hospital upon being taken into custody in connection to his escalating pattern of hostile behavior, some of which was described as racially motivated towards Ahmed. Efforts to create space for new admissions at Corlington Road led to Barry being later transferred to Signet Hospital, Q-Stoke. In a 2018 report published by the Bristol Safeguarding Adults Board, it was suggested that officials at Signet Hospital hadn't been made properly aware of Barry's behavioral concerns 
when he was initially admitted to the facility. The area manager who should have been in charge of the patient's care was reportedly on holiday at the time of the transfer, which allegedly caused a crucial failure of information sharing between the psychiatric hospitals. As a consequence of the miscommunication between the facilities, a mental health tribunal that subsequently reviewed Barry's detention made the misguided decision to order his discharge. Hours after his release on the evening of July the 6th of 2016, Barry broke into Ahmad's apartment and murdered him, carrying out the attack he'd been threatening for years. Following a trial at Bristol Crown Court in November of 2017, Barry was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 23 years. Number 1. Leslie Gadsby after being diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia in 2003, Leslie Gadsby was on the verge of being placed in a mental health center. The hospital, however, was reportedly unable to find an open bed for him. For two days after his initial admission, when there was finally a space available for him, a care professional called his family's home in Liverpool, England, to notify them that the facility was ready for his arrival. Unfortunately, it wasn't Gadsby's relatives who answered the phone, but a police officer who told the mental health official that the 31-year-old had brutally beaten his father to death with a hammer while awaiting his hospital admittance. Gadsby was consequently sent to a psychiatric unit until he was eventually granted a conditional discharge two years later. As per the conditions of his release, Gadsby was supposed to be monitored 24 hours a day. The contact he had with his mother was meant to be heavily restricted and supervised by mental health professionals. In March of 2010, Gadsby was moved to the Scott Clinic Mental Health Center in Stonycroft, where he would be afforded more freedom and independence than his previous facility. Just a few days after his transfer, the then 42-year-old Gadsby was visited by his mother. The two were left alone in an upstairs apartment where Gadsby fatally stabbed a 70-year-old woman before walking down to the first floor to converse with a group of social workers about a game of Scrabble, as if nothing had happened. Gadsby ultimately pled guilty to manslaughter and was ordered to spend the remainder of his life at a secure psychiatric hospital. An official investigation into the matter determined that had Gadsby been subject to robust supervision, as his conditional release had stipulated, the risk of him violently acting out would have been substantially reduced. Thanks for watching. Would you rather piss off your spouse or your boss at work? Let us know in the comments section below.